All right, so we've been sketching our logos to meet the proving ground. Once we've posted those three approaches, then you want to give your input to someone else about what approach you think is most effective. And to get full credit for it, you want to fully respond to a class member's post indicating a clear sketch preference and a written comment and or critique, right? So don't just say, I like that one. You can also say a reason you like it or something you think they might have trouble with, right? So to do your response, I'm going to ask you to put the name of the person you're responding to at the top. So I'm going to respond to myself. I like your positive, negative space solution. I think I'll say the best, I guess, of the three. I think it is the most celebratory. And fits the theme the best. So that would get you full credit. A response like that. Not to yourself, but to another student. And that gives me the excuse to, to pursue this one. I think this one's interesting. I'm going to use it. So how can I pursue it now? Starting assignment four. What I'm going to do is take a screen grab of it. It does not need to be high resolution. And then I'm going to open up that screen grab in PhotoP. So this is how you refine your sketch. Because thumbnails are not meant to be finished solutions. They're just approaches. So we're going to open up PhotoP. And I'm going to open up that screenshot. Again, low res, just fine. I have my tablet here. And how can I clean it up? Well, I can obviously do things like do image adjustments, levels, all the stuff we've done with compositing. And I can really get a sense using levels, like upping the, the darks, of what it's going to look like with black shapes. Right? And decide if I need to clean it up a little bit more before I, I want to trace it, or if this is enough. And I'm going to say that's enough. You know, that that's pretty much works for me. I'm going to clean it up, not in my sketch, but in my as a vector, because I can see everything clearly. The one thing that's a little bit of a problem here is how close these two get. So I'm just going to make it really clear in this refined sketch. I'm just going to paint with white, with pressure sensitivity on at 100% opacity with a normal brush. I'm just going to make that separation clear. But everything else is going to be solved in the vector itself. Because it doesn't make sense wasting a lot of time on a sketch. And yet, I'll waste some time on the sketch. Okay. Also, once it's in PhotoP, you can do this. You can zoom way out and see if it's still recognizable. See what point you lose it. So I have my glasses on, so this is the point I lose it at. And that's pretty good. <laughs> that's about as small as a logo would ever need to be on anything. But if you lose it at, say, 33%, then you probably have too many details in it. You want to simplify it more. You want to thicken some of those shapes so that they show up. Just to make it as clear, engaging, and as versatile as possible. Okay, I'm going to save this. And honestly, I don't even need to save it. I can just do a screen grab of the cleaned up version. And then you're going to start assignment four with that refined sketch. So assignment four is the last thing in unit nine. And you start by posting your refined sketch. And then you're going to post your, your black vector design. And then you're going to post your color version. So this was Colonel Sanders mixed with 
zombies. It was a zombie-fy theme. This was an angry elementals theme. Now, it's going to say here in the assignment, sorry for scrolling so much, the program we're going to use. We're the freeware class. So the professional software is Adobe Illustrator for this, and that's what I'm demonstrating in the morning class. For, for you, we're using vector.com, V-E-C-T-R.com. You'll also find it under links. You do need to sign in with an account, and I just use my Google account. I've never gotten a single email from them, though, so hopefully they don't abuse it. This is one I did, you know, last semester. It was a, a Nighthawk design, positive and negative space, right? Um, I'm going to say new artwork, and... It really doesn't matter. Usually I'll do it on an 800 by 800 pixel size. And I'll save it with my name and assignment four and some description. And this is Day of the Dead. Nico. Nico the Nighthawk. Now, what I like about mascots when it comes to branding is mascots are different than logos. Mascots can have multiple versions and iterations. So when students do a Nico the Nighthawk, I like to kind of keep a reference of it because that's building all the different ways our, our campus mascot can be used. And then I bring in my refined sketch, right, right into it, and then I make it pretty big within this 800 by 800 pixels. And then I might even play with stretching it a little bit and seeing if that helps it, right? I can rotate it, I can stretch it. This is still a raster image, but this is what I'm going to be tracing my, ve my vector on top of. So I think stretched helps a little bit. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more dynamic, like an arrow. I could try tilting it as well. Kind of squinting. I think I like it basically like this. Okay. Now I go back to where I'm going to post it. So that's vector.com. I've got it open in vector.com. I haven't saved it yet. This is some of the inspiration, right? That can help you remember the themes if you're going with Day of the Dead. Of course, you can make it a logo about anything. But I'm going to go ahead and post my refined sketch and my idea, which is a mashup of Nico the Nighthawk campus mascot with the Day of the Dead, or with a Day of the Dead sugar skull, basically. Nope, just the one I want to use. Yeah. Sometimes you might refine more than one because you're having a hard time deciding. But making vectors is difficult enough, especially if it's a new thing for you, that you don't want to have to, to refine a lot and then choose at the end. But in assignment four, you only post your refined sketch, the approach you're going to do. And then the next thing you're going to post is your finished vector. Right? And notice, this was their refined sketch. And they decided by the end, because vectors are difficult, they don't need the whole flames you know, they just wanted this, the strong expression. So things can modify as we're using the tools, as we're making it. All right now that I'm in vector.com, this is our first use of a vector program, and it's different. So we just brought in a raster image, and you can tell that when you click on it, you can see in the sidebar here, these are all the properties. And it just says it's an image. <laughs> So it doesn't give us any of the vector options that our vectors will give us. And the opacity, I'm going to onion skin it. I'm going to take it down to 
just like we've done with sketches for our compositing in Photopea in the past. And then I'm going to actually go to Layers, which is over in the left-hand column. And I'm going to lock it with this padlock. So you'll see next to each layer you have an eyeball, just like in Photopea, for turning it on and off. And you have the option to lock it, which means you can't mess with that anymore. Layers in vector programs, whether it's Illustrator or, or Vector.com, are organizational tools. So you only use layers to organize things. Whenever you make a new vector, it will automatically make a new path that shows up in your layers. So how do I make a path in layers? The most basic tools would be the ones you use to make your emoji for exercise two. That would be the shapes. So often you start making a vector by choosing a shape and then making it nice and big and then transforming it just using the transform box it gives you, rotating it, fitting it in. So these are exactly like the vector shape tools we used in Photopea. How do you change the color? Instead of double clicking on the layer like we did in Photopea, what I would do is change it here. And I would want it to just be black, which is a default color. Right? But let's make it white for the moment. You have another option, which is what's called a border. Because vector paths can either be filled or they can have an outline. Okay, I'll make it strong red so you can see. And then that outline, which will always grow from the, the center of the edge of the original vector, you can make it as many pixels thick as you want, or points thick as you want. We are going to try to do our logos as just black shapes without any borders, without any strokes, without any outlines. Those are all names for the same thing. So I'm just going to turn that off. Now the problem is, if I uncheck both of these, that shape is still there. So that at any time, I could turn on a color. That's what's called an empty path. Now the problem is, if I use a shape, how do I customize it if I don't have a warp tool? Like if I right click, I don't see warp anywhere. Though I, I do see a lot of things that are helpful. So, there are other tools we need besides the shape tools. Unless you think you can make your entire image with just a lot of black shapes stacked up on top of each other. I'm going to show you some other tools that are better. So, the pen tool is underneath the shape tool. And it's the one that is standard to Adobe Illustrator. It takes some practice. There are tutorials right in the program. And I link to them directly. So if you go to the assignment, you go to the very top, I give you a link here, right to the tutorials. And the tutorial that's most helpful is the one that says drawing paths, how to draw paths. This is how you draw it with the pen tool. So. The pen tool creates custom lines and shapes one point at a time. Select the pen tool and click on your workspace, this is your workspace, to start drawing a path. Each time you click, you'll add another point to your vector path. So the way I usually teach it when you're just learning is even if you have curves, you do it all with straights. You use the pen tool, you click, click, for some reason it didn't click the first time. So I'm going to do Command Z and start again. Click, come on, click, <laughs> click, there we go, click, 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 click and move, click and move, like a boxer, and it's just drawing straight lines, this can be modified later, especially if you have complicated shapes, now why is this good, if you have really really clean shapes especially horizontal and vertical straight lines it's hard to draw a straight line vector programs make it incredibly easy click 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 
So you're basically kind of making it into a fractal. 